beautiful people. So um, we uh, found Comprehensive Athletic Park with our family today. I'm right across the ocean. This beach is not quite a beach, it's a little bit muddy and rocky. And, um, but I'm looking at it and it's just nice to see water, to be around water. It's not, it's windy, a little, slightly windy maybe, but it's uh, kind of, I get this, uh, a little bit of a breeze, but it's not cold, it's not warm as well, so just perfect weather. So right now, um, I wanted to take my time and uh, dedicate this episode and name some of the resources and books that helped me when I was switching to plant-based nutrition and it gave me more understanding in terms of um, why some people choose to follow it. That's what I was looking for. That's what I wanted to know for myself. So uh, I'm going to start with, um, I do not have this book with me, uh, but the first book I've read is called The China Study by Dr. T. Colin Campbell. And um, he is a um, mastermind behind a 20 year, year long study. And this study is still not, uh, it's an ongoing study, not completed. The great thing about China is it's so vast and uh, people were spread out in terms, you know, rural urban areas and um, it really gave him opportunity to interview and gather information from variety of people who lived all over and put it all together and really see what is happening. He did notice that um, people who ate more meat were more prone to, to get cancer. So after, after getting all this information, he decided to test it on uh, rats. And they gave them diet which was high, like 15 to 20 percent high. Um, part of it was an animal protein. Those rats would start growing tumors. So I'd encourage you to watch um, Forks Over Knives based on his book, The China Study, if you do not want to read. The, the second book and the second just, um, that one is more of a cookbook that I found, but something for me that um, inspired me, the story was by Chris Carr and uh, her book is a Crazy Sexy Kitchen. She. Her story is that she does have a cancer. She lives with cancer, but plant-based nutrition, uh, just, just go on her website or get a book from the library and read it if you're interested. But that's her testimony to why she um, decided to, for her it was life and death. And uh, she lives with cancer right now, which is manageable. Um, in, and she's, that's what caused her to um, to change her lifestyle um, because she wanted to live, I'd want to say, fulfilling life. Um, this, Mama, how are you doing? The third book um, that I would recommend reading, this is more for people who are on a death bad based on the coronary heart disease and um, Dr. Esselstyn is the doctor who that's uh, prevent and reverse heart disease. At the end of this book he has recipes like dev deviled baby potatoes. For example you steam 12 red potatoes then plunge them in cold water, uh, cold water to chill. Slice potato in half Fill this potato with hummus. So it's like deviled eggs, but they're deviled baby potatoes. And I've made this before, and it was a hit at the, um, one of the gatherings that we had. 
So you fill those potatoes with hummus and there's a green onion sauce recipe. Uh, you can put even sweet corn sauce or walnut sauce on it. Uh, some put some mustard. Um, parsley, cilantro leaves. Yum. Another recipe that he has, there are quite a few, but um, just to give some ideas for like chocolate mousse, blueberry, purple passion, um, which requires tofu, frozen blueberries, maple syrup, and vanilla extract. Some uh, recipes for cakes. Dr. Esselstyn has recipes with like whole wheat products, sprouted wheat. Um, he and his wife, since this uh, diet is specific and it needs to be quite strict because this is, he works with people who has had multiple heart attacks and they have the worst case of arterial blockage. So for them, um, it's literally life or death. And when we talk about death, it's, I don't know if I'll make it till tomorrow. So uh, he reverses their heart disease by um, having them eat vegetables. Specifically, he has a list of vegetables like, um, well, the beets, that was surprising to me, just actual beet, beetroot, but he also like beet greens, kale, collard greens, uh, spinach, uh, I think bok choy, and uh, those are the greens that he wants people to eat um, six times a day, if you can. Now, before you have any other meal, before breakfast, you wake up and uh, you want to cook those vegetables and have a cup of them. Put some balsamic vinegar on top and have a cup of greens, cooked greens, before you eat your oatmeal, for example. And then for um, snack, between lunch and breakfast, you'd have another cup of greens. And then before you have lunch, so um, it goes on. Not everyone, from what I understand, is able to get six times, but that's what he aims for, six times a day, six cups. And what it does, why does he recommend it? Um, he, um, I, when I took the plant-based nutrition course from Ecornell, uh, Dr. Esselstyn um, gave quite an informative speech and he talked about um, how meat uh, and animal products, meat, milk, um, eggs, the, the animal protein uh, causes our arteries to like slow down, like it almost like paralyzes them when you eat it. For example, he mentioned athletes. We, you know, before going for a run or something like two, two um, hours before you end up, you know, an athlete can eat like hamburger or cheese or something. And so their heart, when they go for a run, it doesn't, the arteries, they are not completely opened up. Like um, they, they are shrinking. That's what animal protein tends to do to our arteries so we can go for a run and yet our arteries and heart are not functioning appropriately in when you eat the greens um, they help they're great vasodilators and specifically they um, help with nitrous like they have nitrous oxide and that's what dilates the arteries, opens them up. And it's so trivial for those people who have um, arteries clogged, who had uh, multiple um, heart bypasses. You know, they need to, what the arteries that they still have left, like they need them to be opened up because they cannot afford for, for that artery to um, collapse. That, that's what Dr. Esselstyn concentrates on, and uh, he does cut out um, fattening products, like for example, tofu has um, soybeans, they have fat. So for, for the people who um, have heart disease, he eliminates those products as well as sugars.
Um, some of his recipes do have a maple sugar, but the bad case of um, uh, of cardiovascular disease, he would eliminate um, the sugar completely. And from what I understand, even to like just couple couple pieces of fruit a day. Great book, great doctor. I listened to his talks, uh, multiple of his talks on YouTube, and um, as well when I took my Cornell course, I was um, I, I didn't want to stop uh, listening to what, what he had to say, and it made sense. Uh, children and I we actually both watched to uh, Cornell. Um, course that I've taken to some of the videos I uh, I just wanted them to um, my children I wanted them to to just kind of start to understand why why do we eat this way <laughs>I chose to share this book just simply because I'm reading it right now and I just decided to include it in a list and uh, I've mentioned in a previous video but I um, miss um, not misspelled um, I shared it in the previous video but the title um, was wrong this is called 50 Secrets of the World's um, Longest Living People by Sally Bear. And um, I picked it up at the Kadena Library. Oh, but the research um, that has been done, it, it was um, done in uh, five longevity hotspots in this world. And I'll mention them. So number one, is can you guess the longest longest living people i cannot oh i'm so excited i'm here i'm so excited because this little um city of uh, kiyoka village is up north about i think it's about an hour and a half of a drive from here i'm going there and i don't i hear it's not a very interesting <laughs> place um there's not much to do I want to be there and uh, so number one hotspot for centenarians is or people who live over 100 super centenarians as well is Okinawa island of Japan number two is um, Simi S-Y-M-I it's island in Greece that's why you, we hear a lot about Mediterranean diet right uh, uh, number three is Campo de Mil it's a village in southern Italy. Number four is Hansa, a valley in northwest Pakistan. Interesting, did you guys know that? Pakistan, out of all places. And um, number five is in Burma. It's a county in southern China. Uh, so this book goes over the diets of the people that uh, live in those places. Uh, and some of them are, I mean, quite different from each other. Um, one thing that um, connects them is actually the, they eat less of animal protein and um, tons, tons of vegetables. Um, in this book, I found what was interesting that uh, Sally Bear did mention the China Study Project. Uh, I'm glad she did. She does say um, that if you do choose to eat meat, you, there's more reason for you to go and uh, choose that organic, expensive that we see at the stores because that would be a little piece that you'd eat, um, which does have benefits but it's not in quantities that we eat uh, what's wrong with us people meat everywhere breakfast lunch dinner snack oh so she says uh, it says Sally Bear decided to train as a nutritionist after dramatically improving her own health with a change in diet uh, Bear studied at the British College of Nutrition Health in London and has traveled all over the world in her quest to discover the secrets of living long and staying young Currently, she lives in Islamabad, Pakistan, with her husband and their two children. Now, it's been 
15 years ago since copyright of this book. But then it says, uh, I see this 2006, so it's probably another edition. Uh, she covers, after she describes the diets, and uh, there are two, one to two interviews from the uh, people from those hotspots. Then she goes into 50 secrets of longevity. Uh, some of them include, um, you know, number one, eating only eight parts full. Number one secret. That's what we know about Japanese culture. Uh, eating grains is another one. And I like how she, of course, it, as a nutritionist, she goes deeper into uh, why um, you want grains, what kind of grains uh, have more, like, you know, complete protein. I have written some, um, took, took some notes about um, complete protein that I did not know. Uh, Plant-based complete protein. I, I knew that um, soy has complete protein, hemp, buckwheat, that's what I've learned so far, but I did not know that amaranth and millet also have complete protein, all eight essential amino acids that you need in your body. Um, again, soy uh, is good because some other things, but it has to be eaten. Um, actually, in Okinawa, it's one of the places that it's eaten uh, the most and yet you see centenarians here. So um, One thing um, that is mentioned for the soy is when you eat more than 30 grams a day like over an ounce It may weaken thyroid function according to some studies and um, The bad press that it gets about it's because of uh, phytates they block the uptake of certain minerals like calcium and magnesium. And we also know that soy does have calcium and magnesium, but it's interesting because it's like has phytate, so they're not getting absorbed as effectively. Um, but the interesting thing about it is when you do eat fermented soy products, um, you do not get this problem because they are as much, it's not as much of a problem because they're lower, low fermented foods, soy foods like. Um, Tempeh, have you heard about tempeh? Look it up. It's um, very um, uh, like lower in phytates, which is great. So she also mentions the other studies that have been shown to um, have some toxic pro with soy consumption having toxic properties and being harmful when eaten in large amounts. I mentioned that. But it says, however, findings were based on tests in which rats were given large amounts of soy and little of nothing else. So when you do make soy part of your uh, diet that has variety of, you know, vegetables and grains and fruit, um, it's not as big. It's only if you eat soy, you know, surviving on soy. Mm. Um, and it does say also Okinawans and people of Bama, which is in China, they do eat moderate amounts as part of a nutrition-rich, well-balanced diet. And she encourages to buy soy sauce that would be lower in salt because it tends to be high. It says... Um, also, ordinary unfermented tofu and soy milk also have their benefits. They're easy to use in cooking. But the big thing is there's so much of that GMO soy right now in the market. You got have to be careful. Really make sure it's organic. And enjoy it in moderation. But it's great because soy is a complete protein. Um, I actually think it's good. It's great for kids because it does have that extra. And I love soy too. Oh, eat um, like edamame yeah my weakness um i i think it's great for kids because it has that it, you don't need any, any other fats like um butter or some, something the oatmeal that you eat or like soy products already has fat in it that our bodies need uh okay so it's very interesting too about soy it said that it has um 
women, women who eat soy regularly also have fewer other hormone-related problems like PMS and polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, Okinawans reduced, in comparison to even mainland Japan, Okinawans have, per this book, uh, have um, lower risk of breast cancers because um, most likely because of soy, because um, they eat much more of soy, soy products. Uh, go organic, of course, so just um, some things, you know, drink, um, make time for tea, green tea, drink water, the most essential nutrient, make sure you get clean water. We got uh, Berkey recently, so excited to use that. We hear water in Okinawa is not the best. Um, friendly bacteria, like fermented foods are great, but be careful uh, if you have osteoporosis, it tends to... Uh, it's not great for bones. Uh, apricot, she mentions apricot and apricot kernels. And I've read before just some other documentaries I've watched about um, apricot, like the pits, the kernels being anti cancer. Like they've even sold in those packets, like superfood. And uh, it was interesting that I was like, oh yeah, I've, I've heard about it. But she mentions that as well. a salad a day so let's make this our closing guys veggie nourished have that veggie nourished friday but not just friday have have a ha veggie nourished day um i how many times i encourage people and again i sometimes slack at it sometimes i have my vegetables and eat your greens let's make a goal um starting today let's make a goal to have a salad every day for a week okay so friday um let's start eat your salad on friday too eat your salad on friday please make an effort plan on so that would be like your eighth day it's fine start it right now but saturday sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday day and next Friday seven days plus this Friday uh, eat a salad uh, if you can take photos every day of your salad I'll be doing exact same thing um, taking photos of my salads and I will post them at the end of the week you're welcome to post during the week as well to keep us going and I would like to see at least two photos of your salads okay um, Seven would be even better. And um, I'm going to get a, uh, a gadget at uh, Daiso and send it. I'm going to have a drawing. So you post the photos of your salads and um, um, Make sure you check in, but if you want if you want to enter the drawing, so I'm going to have a drawing. If you want to enter the drawing, I want you, I need all seven photos of your salads that week. That gives you an opportunity to enter in the drawing. Uh, I also, after you do that, this is the most thing. You cannot do other, um, other things unless you have the photos of your salads, plant-based salads. <laughs> so after that, you to get more chances to enter into a drawing, I um, want you to, to share the post, encourage other people to do exact same thing. What I want you to do is I'm going to open it for two weeks is going for two weeks and you need to have seven seven photos of your daily salads make them plant-based 
Make sure you eat them after that. Make them big, variety of vegetables. So for seven days, um, within two weeks, hopefully it will get us in a good uh, habit uh, for two weeks. And you don't need seven photos from you of those salads. You, when you do that, I want you to post them on um, uh, my Facebook post that I make. So you post them on my Facebook, share that post. I need you to share it. And I need you to post it in um, like a collage if you can. So seven of them. After you do that, you have an opportunity to enter it again. And um, by that, um, again, a share, when you share a post, that gives you an entry as well. But that entry doesn't count unless I have the seven photos of your salads that you ate throughout seven days okay when when you do that when you have the when I have that photo collage of those amazing salads don't cheat eat it once a day get into that habit and then share the post that gives you the second entry and then go to my blog and and like the blog like the page that gives you three entries and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Daiso and choose some uh, gadgets and uh, you will get a gift from me um, yep it will be fun and they have some fun stuff guys so yeah um, I'll choose I'll choose two gadgets and um, I may even ask uh, and give you choices of those gadgets as well so guys thank you thank you for watching uh, thank you for being on the journey with me happy veggie nourished Friday and happy veggie nourished life be happy and be healthy bye bye